Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning worship again on August 30th, so we encourage you to join us there for worship, and be sure to wear a mask. Um, we are also collecting school supplies for area children. You can bring it here to worship and drop it off in the back. And what other announcements do we have? I believe that is all. So if there are no other announcements from the congregation here, would you please stand and join me in the greeting of the collective? God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. And our century thoughts. What joy we feel when we are called together to celebrate God's love. God's love flows through our lives. This is what it means to be the body of Christ. Faithful witnesses to God. Let us rejoice on this day. And please join me in our first hymn, number 452, My Faith Looks Up to Thee.
concerns do we have to lift up today? It's a beautiful day outside, so praise God for that. But on a more serious note, <clears throat> on a more serious note, we need to keep in mind Harry, Harry Fox, Michelle Olson, Gloria Warmoth, and Marla Withy, Neo <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> Naomi Fanta jo and Joyce Funk, as well as all our children and educators as they prepare for going back to school. It's kind of a hectic time for them. And of course, anybody who's sick right now, or anybody who's alone, feeling depression. Does anybody else have anything else to share? If not, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Ever-present Lord, we thank you for the many blessings you have bestowed upon us. The beautiful sunrise, the cooler conditions, the gentle breeze as it touches our skin. You're everywhere and you're here to comfort us. Even in our darkest times, we, play, we praise you, Lord. And some of us, we are seeing those dark times right now. We ask you to be with everyone going through an illness or, or just, they're, they're afraid. Comfort them. Give them hope and peace that they are seeking so much. Guide them to your loving hands and show them the way that leads to everlasting peace. We lift up to you today Harry and Michelle, Gloria, Marla, Naomi and Joyce, all of our little children who are just longing to go back to school to be with their friends and teachers and so they can learn and grow. Protect them all, Lord. Give them the strength and courage that they need for this time. And give them the faith to make it through. We pray all of this in the name of your Son, who taught us to faith, faithfully pray, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now while there might not be any children here with us today, I want to share a children's message for those that may be watching at home. And for those of you who are watching at home, I know it's right around the corner if it hasn't started yet, but school is coming, isn't it? And whether you're learning from home or you're actually able to go to school, there's one thing that still remains constant, and that's homework. You can't escape it. And sometimes you get those really easy assignments you can fly through in just a few minutes. Great, awesome. But every once in a while you come across an, a project or an assignment that's very difficult. It really taxes your brain. What do you do then? It's very easy for our nature to just say, I want to walk away. I want to give up. Toss the paper out the window, let the dog eat it. <laughs> but I encourage you, don't give up. You will learn a valuable lesson from that homework assignment, no matter how difficult it is. In fact, the more difficult it is, the more you learn. So if you come across a difficult assignment or project and you're stuck, ask for help. Ask your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, maybe even a neighbor. I'm sure they would be glad to help you. Just don't give up. So can you do that for me? Just don't give up. Keep going. You'll learn a valuable lesson from it. Amen. And will you please join me in our next hymn, number 2211 from The Faith We Sing, Faith is Patience in the Night. Faith is patience in the night, waiting for the morning light, never giving up the fight. Spirit God, give us faith. Faith is laughter in our pain, joy in Genesis 45, 1 through 15. And this is the tail end of Joseph's journey in Egypt. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before his attendants. And he cried out, Have everyone leave my presence. 
So there was no one with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him, and Pharaoh's household heard about it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him, because they were terrified at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here, because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two, not, two years now, there has been famine in the land, and for the next five years, there will be no plowing and reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So then it was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me father to Pharaoh, lord of his entire household and ruler of all Egypt. Now hurry back to my father and say to him, this is what your son Joseph says. God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, don't delay. You shall live in the region of Goshen and be near me. You, your children and grandchildren, your flocks and herds, and all you have, I will provide for you there, because five years of famine are still to come. Otherwise, you and your household and all who belong to you will become destitute. You can see for yourselves, and so can my brother Benjamin, that it is really I who am speaking to you. Tell my father about all the honor accorded me in Egypt, and about everything you have seen, and bring my father down here quickly. Then he threw his arms around his brother Benjamin and wept. And Benjamin embraced him, weeping, and he kissed all his brothers and wept over them. Afterward, his brothers talked with him. And our second reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. Leaving that place, that is Jewish territory, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman living in that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and is suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was only I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So, have you ever wanted to just give up? You know, throw in the towel, walk away. Maybe you've been working on a project or doing some sort of task and nothing would work out right. And the pieces just would not come together. I've been there. Or perhaps more seriously, you've possibly faced persecution, discrimination, depression, illness, or other hardship in your life. It's a familiar feeling for so many people in our world. And it's only amplified when stress, frustration, and anxiety are high, like in our time right now. The two main characters in today's scripture readings certainly encountered hardship and darkness in their lives, didn't they? Yet they persevered. They got through it. Through everything they went through, they found reconciliation and healing. But what kept them going? What motivated them to stay the course, however bumpy it was, until the morning sun broke through the darkness that had enveloped their lives? With Joseph, we caught the tail end of his amazing journey. But 
it's one that continues for a good part of the book of Genesis. And I encourage you to go back and reread it if you get a chance. It's one of my favorites. But today, we saw Joseph being reunited with his brothers after approximately 22 years of separation. 22 years. But it's amazing what occurred during those 22 years that culminated to this point. It's it just mind-blowing when you think about it. At the young age of 17, Joseph, he was loved by his father, but envied by his 11 brothers. I can't imagine having 11 brothers, but thank goodness I only had two. <laughs> but in their jealousy, Joseph's brothers threw him in a pit and then sold him. They sold their only brother, their youngest brother, one of their youngest brothers, to some passing Midianite merchants. And once Joseph was carried away, they convinced their father that Joseph had been killed and eaten by a wild animal. So your father thinks you're dead. Meanwhile, Joseph is being transported to Egypt. And once there, he's sold into slavery to Potiphar, who is one of Pharaoh's officials. Joseph worked in Potiphar's household, and he was very good at what he did. He, God blessed him and gave him success in everything he did. And his master noticed this and gave him control of the entire house. Unfortunately, Joseph's journey was about to get a bit more bumpy. Potiphar's wife began to take a, a keen notice to him. And when Joseph refused to go to bed with her, she falsely accused him of an adulterous act and had him thrown in prison. So it just got worse from slave to prisoner. But amazingly, while in prison, Joseph was blessed yet again by God, and he was granted favor in the eyes of the prison warden. And that warden gave him a bit more freedom so he could move around, but he also gave him some responsibilities, which gave Joseph something to do. And it was there in prison that Joseph met the former cupbearer of the Pharaoh. This cupbearer had a dream one night, and it concerned him, and he told Joseph about it, and Joseph was great, wonderfully able to interpret this dream. While Joseph's interpretation did come true, and the cupbearer was restored back to his position next, next to Pharaoh, Joseph was forgotten about for another two years. Two more years in prison. It wasn't until Pharaoh's own dream went uninterpreted that the cupbearer remembered Joseph. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm lucky if I can remember what I had for breakfast this morning, but remembering two years ago, it's a little sketchy for me. Regardless, the cupbearer remembered, and Pharaoh brought Joseph before him to interpret his dream. And God blessed Joseph with not only the interpretation, but a blessing through the Pharaoh of freedom, power, and great position. Joseph went from being a mere prisoner to being one of the most powerful people in all of Egypt, second only to the Pharaoh, in just one day. Rags to riches story. What followed next was years of plenty came upon the land, followed by years of famine. And these were revealed in Pharaoh's dreams, which Joseph had interpreted. So Joseph had prepared the nation for those years of famine during the years of plenty. And this led people from all around the known world to come to Egypt for food. And this is where Joseph's brothers come in. They had been living in Canaan with their father, and they needed food. So they came to Egypt looking for food, and who did they find? Joseph. But they didn't know it was him. So Joseph's in this place of power, and he's got his brothers right in front of him. A great opportunity God has given him. But think about everything that had to happen to Joseph 
for him to get to that place. He was sold into slavery, wrongly accused and thrown into prison, favored by the warden out of all the prisoners and given free range in the prison. Pharaoh's cupbearer had to be thrown into that same prison as Joseph. That cupbearer remembering Joseph's interpretation two years mm. later and also being present when Pharaoh's dream went uninterpreted. Pharaoh being willing to bring a former slave and prisoner into his court to try to interpret his dreams when his own wise advisors could not. Joseph receiving that interpretation from God and then Pharaoh blessing him and honoring him. That's one amazing roller coaster of a ride. Can you imagine if you went through that? All the ups and downs and all the emotions that Joseph must have felt on every step of this journey. Surely there were times when Joseph was low and just wanted to throw in the towel and sit in prison, give up. Yet through it all, Joseph kept his faith and trust in God and, that, and believed that God would see him through. And in the end, God not only blessed Joseph with great power and position, but he rewarded him by reconciling and reuniting him with his long-lost brothers and allowing to save the life of his dearly beloved father. Joseph's great faith brought him through the darkest times of his life and helped to save his own people. Now, like Joseph, the Canaanite woman in today's story, gospel reading anyway, she also faced hardship. While we don't know much about her, we do know that she had a very sick daughter. One day as Jesus passes by, this Gentile woman calls out to him, pleading to him to heal his da her daughter. Jesus initially responds to her, letting her know that his first priority is to the Jewish people. Pleading to him again to heal her daughter, Jesus responds with, It is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Now, I'll admit that when I read this, I was a bit taken back. Jesus' reply to this Gentile woman seems very harsh to us modern-day readers. But nevertheless, it encouraged this woman to keep asking him for a miracle. Just to clarify, Jesus was, in fact, sent first to the nation of Israel the children in this context. But the time would soon come when God's offer of salvation would be extended to the whole world, regardless of ethnicity or nationality. And while Jews during this time, they actually considered Gentiles as dogs, they were, they were shunned. Jesus knew this woman would understand this description as an invitation to ask for what would later become available to all. And this faithful woman, she jumps at this invitation. Yes, it is, Lord. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. She saw, she knew within her heart that God's love was for everyone, not just the Jewish people. This was a concept that was, wasn't widely accepted in the Jewish community, especially amongst the scribes and Pharisees. But she knew her great faith led her to believe God's love was for all people everywhere. In response to her great faith, Jesus not only complimented her, but granted her request, healing her daughter without even needing to see her. That's amazing. These stories of great faith of not only Joseph and the Gentile woman, but of so many people throughout the Bible. It should give us encouragement for our own journey through this world. So I ask you, how are you doing right now? It's an understatement to say that 2020 has been a doozy of a year. Since that coronavirus pandemic swept into the nation in the early spring, our way of life has been turned upside down. Not only have countless people tragically fallen ill and died from this virus, 
People around the world are physically separated from their family and friends. Many others have lost their jobs, barely scraping by, or are even on the verge of homelessness. My heart breaks and goes out to them. For so many across our nation and around the world, this new era is a rather bleak and dark time. Yet with all the darkness swirling around, there is still a flame of hope defying that darkness. During this time when it would be understandable if you shook your fist at the sky and say, why me? People are turning to their faith for strength during this time. There is a long line of evidence indicating people turn to faith in times of calamity and high anxiety because they're looking for hope and answers. However, it got a little bit difficult because churches nationwide were forced to temporarily close their doors as that virus swept in. And we all had to get creative with how we do worship and how we bring that love of Christ to the world. Like so many other churches around the nation, we here were forced to temporarily close our doors. And we moved our worship service to an online format. While it wasn't quite the same as having everybody in the pews and being able to interact with you all, this virtual worship was an important bridge to get us through this time of increased social distancing. Yet it also had an unexpected side effect. By providing our worship online for our regular church family, we also made it possible to reach those who may have drifted away from attending church. Not even our church. They may have drifted away from a church 500 miles away. And we've also connected with people who have never set foot in our little sanctuary. Through the sharing of God's word and our faith, people are finding the strength to persevere through the dark days of this pandemic. But that brings me back to, what about you? Are you drawing on your faith for strength during this new era? Or are you simply relying on your own devices? I urge you to release any burden that you are carrying and give it to God. He's big enough. He can handle it. I know it can be hard to do, especially in our culture where we love to control every aspect of our lives. But if you put your faith and trust in the Lord, he will help you through the dark days, and he'll be there to celebrate with you on the good days. So like Joseph in Egypt and that Canaanite woman pleading for a miracle, I urge you to remain strong and courageous. Stand firm in your faith. Do not waver, but stick to the path. God has a greater plan in motion, and we may not know what that is. We may not be able to see the light at the end of the tunnel, but we should take great comfort in knowing that God is right there walking with us, hand in hand. We need to keep our faith in him, trusting him every step of the way. So I want to leave you with a reaffirming word, an important reminder during this time from Paul from his first letter to the Corinthians. Be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. Do everything in love. Amen. Now at this time, we would normally take our offering, but in this new era, we don't want to touch anything. So our offering plate is at the back of the church, and you can drop it off on your way in or out. And if you want to send in a donation at home, our address is in the bulletin as well. And with that, would you please join me in our offertory prayer? God of abundance and joy, we thank you for the many blessings you have poured on our lives. Receive these gifts, lovingly given, and bless them in your service. Amen. And please join me in our closing hymn, number 2196.
We walk by faith. It looks like there's five verses to this one. Yes. Until we be, meet again. Mm -hmm.